What's going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about the top couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade here, heading into the first week of October, starting off this month of October in 2019. There are also two stocks that you guys ended up calling out that I want to talk about and give my opinion on that you guys called out in the Discord group chat. And by the way, if you're not in that Discord group chat, that is linked down below There's there's a call out section in there and if you want me to talk about any stock go to the call out section drop a ticker symbol and I'll get to it in an upcoming video and I also want to just go over very briefly the stock market futures right now because the futures they open up every single Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard so you can see the S&P the Dow Nasdaq gold crude oil natural gas silver whatever it may be you can see the futures and then you can end up planning your week accordingly based on if these futures gap up if these futures gap down you can plan for that upcoming day in this case the upcoming monday for your trading so if you guys enjoy this video feel free to go down below hit that like button <clears throat> Ooh, if my voice is raspy guys i do have allergies right now so you know why hit that subscription button if you want to see further content for me involving the stock market investing and trading and let's get right into it looking at the es right now the e-mini s&p 500 index future so the futures right now for the S&P, they're up $7, up 0.24%. So that's a nice little gap up here from the big red day, um, the couple of red days that we've been seeing here in the overall markets and in the S&P 500, right? We saw the big red day this past week, and now it seems like we are recovering a little bit um, from that, you know, with this gap up. Again, we're up about $7.50 right now. That's pretty, pretty good for the bulls out there. The NASDAQ right now, guys, if we pull the NASDAQ, NASDAQ futures up and they just got erased from my watch list. Let me just type it in really quick. NASDAQ right now up 21 points, up 0.29%. So you can see here on the one day, one minute, you guys can see the nice little gap up, right? You guys can see, you know, we were getting killed last week, killed last week. Well, this is pretty much uh, the 27th, which was Friday. You know, we were going down. But then remember, we actually finished this past week on a nice little bull run so the fact that we gapped up today this could be telling me this is telling me that okay maybe this little bull run that we finished off at on could be continuing heading into this week which is why or due to you know the futures being up right so this is one reason why it's important to analyze futures because you can see whether or not a trend is continuing you know from the previous week's close or whether it's not right which is pretty cool to see so if we go to the uh what's the uh, other one the uh the dow jones guys the dow jones this one's up 63 points right now up 0.24 percent you guys can see again we rallied heading into the close friday now we're gapping up holding that 180 sma on this intraday chart so hey you know this little rally towards the end of the day on friday could be continuing based on what we're seeing from the futures right now heading into the market tomorrow so overall futures right now they're looking pretty pretty good right they're all continuing their rally from this push on friday and just to break down the s p very quickly guys for those of you all that don't follow my channel this is the first time you're watching the channel i love going over the overall market at the beginning of every single video mainly the s p so we can get an understanding of what's going on what are the technicals telling us so in under a minute here very very briefly i'm seeing a potential head and shoulder pattern forming here on the SPX on this four hour chart which is the six month chart you guys can see here the left shoulder the head when we peak to that 3027 all time high and now if especially if we break 2950 maybe this upcoming week we could be on our way to forming that right shoulder which if we pull back here to the one year one day if it completes guys we could be seeing ourselves downwards to basically the $2,700 level, maybe that, you know, $2,750 level, maybe $2,800 level. Pretty much if we break $2,950, we could be going down here and breaking support after support to potentially complete this head and shoulder pattern, the right shoulder of it that I'm seeing here. So right now, with everything going on, 
you know, negative stuff regarding the trade war, economy, everything that's going on right now, I think there is more potential downside, right? Especially since we struggled here on a technical basis at that all-time high. We got a double top. We're seeing a lot of pressure downwards now. You know, I think if, especially, again, I can't reiterate this enough. If we break 29.50, I think we're going to be going down um, and potentially completing that right shoulder. So let me know down below in the comments, what are your thoughts on the markets right now? I'd love to know. I love talking to you guys in the comments. I love responding to you all. This is our community here, so feel free to let me know your thoughts, and let's get into these stocks that I am watching. So with my theory that the markets are going to go down here in the next couple weeks, next couple of months, maybe something like last October to December, I'm of course going to be watching market ETFs and volatility ETFs, right? Because those are, I guess you can say in red times when the markets are volatile and when they're going down, these group of ETFs and ETNs, they're my bread and butter, right? And these are the ones listed right here. TVIX is my go-to, right? This is an ETN. It it trades based upon, you know, volatility, which is the VIX, V-I-X. Whenever the VIX is going up, the markets are volatile, typically going down, you know, that's when TVIX is going up, right? Obviously, when the markets dump, TVIX goes up as well. So if my theory of this S&P index breaking this level and forming that right shoulder, if that actually ends up happening, which if it doesn't happen, guys, it's okay. We're going to pivot and we're going to really break down the markets and see other trades that could potentially play out if we end up breaking to the upside, right? But if we're breaking to the downside here, like I'm thinking we might be be uh, doing here in the next couple of weeks, TVIX is going to be a go-to, right? SQQQ, we've, we've talked about on this channel a lot. When the markets are selling off, typically the NASDAQ gets hit the hardest because NASDAQ has a lot of tech stocks and tech stocks, they're a bit more volatile than some of these Dow 30 stocks or some of the very, very large cap stocks that take up the S&P 500, right? So SQQQ goes up whenever the NASDAQ is selling off at a 3x rate. So for example, let's say the NASDAQ gets killed one day, let's say it goes down 3%, right? SQQQ, since it goes up three times with the NASDAQ goes down, SQQQ is going to be up 9%, right? So this is one that you're pretty much shorting the NASDAQ in a much safer way than a put option, in my opinion, and a much, much safer way than actually shorting the NASDAQ by just trading an ETF that trades based upon it. But this is a leveraged ETF for those of you guys that don't know much about that. They're very, very volatile and you could lose a lot of money, but you can also make a lot of money playing them, right? So SPXS is another one. This is very similar to SQQQ, but instead of tracking the NASDAQ, the only difference is it tracks the S&P. That's literally the only difference. It goes up whenever the S&P is selling off at a 3x rate. So those are my go-to market ETFs slash ETNs that I trade all the time on a weekly basis, right? Last year when the markets were getting killed in October to December, I'm, I know a lot of you guys probably weren't watching the channel uh, last year because I don't know, I think I had like 800 subscribers when the whole, um, you know, market fiasco happened last year, but I was trading these every single day, no joke, in and out, and I was doing very, very well, so I'm very excited to see if another big sell-off comes, because my strategy is to trade these, take the profits and then funnel them into stocks that when the markets are falling down, these stocks are going to become more and more undervalued. And I like holding stocks long term for compound interest and for dividends. That's one of my retirement strategies. So I take the profits and then whatever I don't use for living expenses, whatever I don't use for just spending money, whatever I want to do, I funnel them into my long term investing, like buy some stocks, for example, like Johnson and Johnson or something, right? some Altria, some stocks that have a growing dividend that pay lots of dividends so I can compound my wealth over time. That's one of my retirement goals. And that's kind of how I use my, um, 
honestly my trading profits, right? That's what I really do here um, on a day to day basis, right? I trade, take the profits, some of the profits, and then funnel them into long term stocks. So, a couple of other stocks that I'm watching here, and I talked about this one on Friday's video, or in Friday's video rather, is ABV, A B B V. So, this is a pharmaceutical company. For those of you guys that don't know, this stock has been getting crushed over the past, I'd say, um, months and probably a little bit over a year at this point if we look back here on the three-year one week more than a year it's been about i'd say almost two years that this stock has been getting crushed from 125 all the way down to 62 dollars right you can clearly see on the what is this the three-year one week chart this one's on a downtrend right if we zoom in a bit to the one year one day it's about to hit a resistance here at the 180 sma which was a resistance a couple of months back in the month of november in 2018 so this is what i was talking about in friday's video at this point this can either be a breakout swing trade if we break above this 180 sma or if we see some resistance here and we start to push down this could be a point in time where we can maybe even short abv maybe we could play some put options on abv right that's something very very possible so this is setting up either for a breakout long position or a short here right and if we zoom in a bit to the 184 hour you guys can see it's looking very good right on the six month chart we're breaking out of moving averages we're breaking out of the 50 the 180 sma even the ema here we're holding these levels now as so ports right and we're confirming them on higher lows right the trends making a higher low confirming the support on the 50 sma which is a very good sign that we want to continue this rally but again be careful because if we zoom out i just showed you guys that if we hit this and then we start to get rejected you know we may be seeing a correction um in abv and let me just draw out some <coughs> uh levels of support for you guys here um, let me show you. So, okay, a major one, <clears throat> and you guys really can see this one, actually. I didn't really mention this in Friday's video, which I should have, but this is something that is major right here, right? This point, 75, 76, I think if we break out of that, not only is that going to be a breakout here, but it's also going to be a breakout on this one-year, one-day chart, which, again, I said if we break out of that level, the 180 SMA resistance, that's going to be a long play on Abvi, right? Disney is another one that a bunch of people, this is actually one that the uh, members in our Discord group chat wanted me to talk about. Disney's a stock that is in a situation here that I think it's selling off heading into this release of the Disney Plus platform, right? We talked about this months ago. I know a lot of the new subscribers might not know this because obviously they're new, but for those of you guys that have been along on along the journey here on YouTube for a while, I was talking about how we got the news. Remember this? We got the Disney Plus news regarding the price, I think it was, um, uh, uh, the price, the release date of the Disney Plus platform, and that's what really shot up the price of Disney. And I was talking about how as we were to get closer and closer to the actual release date to this product, maybe the stock's price will start to die off a bit because the initial hype is wearing off. Maybe, you know, the, the, the product releases and the stock falls. I was talking about how this was a possibility. And now it seems like we're seeing that, right? We hit 147 in August, the, the beginning of August. And since then, you know, as this release is coming up, I believe it's in November, the stock has just been falling down. So it's interesting, in my opinion, you know, what's this going to do in the next month? You know, is this going to continue to sell off? into the release of Disney Plus, and then is it going to just hover around here, maybe not do anything, because again, the initial hype is probably worn off at that point, or is it going to maybe pop on the on the release maybe the initial reaction from customers maybe the initial reviews maybe we get some numbers regarding how many people signed up or whatever if they even released that who knows guys maybe that pops the stock up again so at this point it's interesting with disney i think the, the biggest catalyst is this disney plus platform is this you know streaming service that's coming out and a major pattern that i'm seeing here is a head and shoulders right this is textbook head and shoulders right if we look out a bit 
here to the one year one day, you guys will be able to see it. So we were trading in a zone on Disney. If we just zoom out a bit even more, it was kind of between 96 to 115. It was in this level for about a year, two years, and it was kind of stuck, right? You guys can see it 97 to about 115. And then again, we were struggling at that same resistance point, And then we got that news about Disney Plus. Uh, is it even called? I'm pretty positive it's called Disney Plus. But if it's not, guys, I'm sorry. It's late. My nose is really just messing with me right now. My, my allergies, so I might be just messed up in the head right now. But I'm pretty sure it's called Disney Plus. That released, and then boom. The stock shot up, and now we might be seeing a retracement due to this head and shoulder pattern back down to that level at 120, which is not bad in my opinion. You know, this could be an interesting spot for a long position you know, on Disney. I'm actually hoping that happens so I could buy some shares here at the 120, 119, 121, that general area. So the way it's looking right now, guys, again, we got the left shoulder, we got the head, and with this pattern looking like it is, this could do something like this, where we go down, the RSI will get overextended there, we'll see a bit of buying pressure, right, to really just to give us a breather on this one because it's going to be very, very oversold. We might get the pop to there, and then we might continue back down <clears throat> to that overall level at 120, which again, if we hold that old resistance at 115, 120 as a new support, this could be a spot to go long on Disney. And again, watch that Disney Plus release, guys. Watch what the stock's doing around that time period. I think it's going to be interesting. So that is what my thoughts are on Disney, guys. Um, it's really just based on Disney Plus at this point. So Snap, SNAP, this is another one that a subscriber wanted me to talk about. Um... Honestly, not really liking the pattern here on Snap. We can see it's kind of a, a strong resistance at the 1775, 18-ish level. It's almost like a double top stretched across two months here. Now it seems like we are breaking the 180 SMA support. We already broke this 50 SMA support. Although we are holding this overall trend, which is the only hope I have right now for this um, uptrend that, that's really just keeping this uptrend alive at this point you know if we end up selling off aggressively breaking this get maybe get getting back down into the 14s this is not going to be one that I want to mess with I'll be completely honest with you guys but if we try if we try and squeeze here up to that resistance to retest 1775 maybe 18 dollars this could be very interesting right because at that point if we pop here on this higher low we may break the 180 sma the 50 sma and that could be a play from let's say 1650 ish up to around 18 dollars so i do like it in that scenario but if we dump this might not be one um at least for the longs out there maybe if you're shorting it Maybe if you're doing a put, um, put options, that could be a, a snap could be one for you at that point. But, you know, based on these technicals right now, it's looking like, hey, there's a chance that it might pop. But there's also a chance due to this double top that we might dump aggressively. So that's kind of my brief thoughts on Snapchat. Another one that's interesting, in my opinion, <clears throat> excuse me again, guys, my voice is like, I don't know, it doesn't sound different probably. But to me, it's hard to record this video today. I'll be honest with you guys but BA Boeing this is one that is breaking into a new zone right now right from 375 or it's been breaking into a new zone from 375 up to around $400 this is looking good on a technical basis because we broke that 375 resistance we confirmed that level as a new support as well as that 50 SMA here on the four hour chart and now we pull down again from about what level is this 390 down to about 380 and it seems like we did confirm the higher low here heading into the close of the session on Friday and you guys can see we did end up bottoming out at 380 and trying uh, kind of we tried to close on a nice little upswing there not really but the fact is we are seeing green candlesticks forming on the four hour chart, which is a good sign. So let's say the markets hold green tomorrow morning. Let's say Boeing is 
gapping up pre-market. Um, this could definitely be a play in the morning. And again, I would probably get in 385 and ride it up to about 400. This is looking like a nice swing as of right now. So those are the four main stocks I'm watching. Snap, Boeing, Disney for sure here, guys. I'm liking it. Not really as a short-term play right now, but if things set up at that 120 level, I'm going to love it at that point in time. And uh, what was the other one, guys? I'm blanking out right now. Abvi, and of course, all of those other market ETFs. Those are a bunch I'm watching. And another one to watch as this whole Disney thing plays out, its release, is Netflix. Because it seems like Netflix has been getting crushed Ever since this Disney news came out, um, you know, overall, Netflix hasn't been able to crack back into the 400s, right? It was struggling at around 380. Now it's dumping down into the 260s. I'm thinking it might go down to 230, which is the low it hit back in December of 2018. So watch that level on Netflix, um, you know, especially as Disney Plus gets closer to uh, uh, releasing here. So I'm going to end off the video here, guys. Those are the main ones that I am watching. If you did enjoy this video, if you found value, Value in this video feel free to go down below hit that like button consider subscribing to the channel and join our strive smart discord group chat and our strive smart facebook group and don't forget to drop a comment let me know your thoughts on the market let me know your thoughts on these stocks and what stocks and etfs are you watching i'd love to know so i'll catch you all in the next video thanks again for watching if you stuck to the end you are awesome peace out